What is up, everybody? My name is Advance, and this is Advance Plays. And here we are, week 14 versus the Patriots. Tom Brady's revenge came one year too late as he retired at the end of last season. But that's okay because we got his apprentice, Josh Rosen, and the up and coming Von Riddick. And, you know, they're going to. They're going to do them justice in this game. Let's get into this. On the west coast of the Sunshine State, downtown Tampa is the spot, Raymond James Stadium. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New England Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They've handled all comers through the first three months, a perfect 12 and 0. Yeah, they're three quarters of the way to a perfect season, and now's where it really starts to get into your mind. We'll see if it affects their play in any way. On the other side of the field for the visiting Patriots, it's late in the year. We all know it. We've seen the calendar for these guys. Their bodies could probably use a break, but they have to push on. And they're really not as worried about that as maybe we think. They know they've got the entire offseason to rest. All they care about is the game in front of them and finishing strong. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So now here come the Patriots to take over on offense. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. What? No stint? <laughs> no, that's the uh, that's the quarterback that they actually drafted this year. I can't remember which round they took him in, but yeah, he's um, I think he's actually pretty good. One time a week thing, they work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. First down, and the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. And now we take a peek at the Patriot offense. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. But I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. Oh, that was no excuse there. Both of y'all jumped in front of the ball. One of y'all should have caught it. Incomplete as well. Devin White, the rookie out of LSU, there to bat that one away. Third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, Paul. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And he's able to get it back to the 41 yard line. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. So the face mask puts them in even better shape than they were in as they'll have a short field here on first and 10. Now Rosen. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense, when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes 
you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Now Rosen looking to throw. Open man is Howard, the tight end. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. And we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got a turnover. We appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Here's Rosa to the end zone, but it's incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin, but it'll be second and goal. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. But that doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. Second down and goal. Rosen to the goal line, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time, but now it's third and goal. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Now it's Rosen feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Keanu Neal with a safety blitz for the sack. Third and goal they decided to throw for, but how about the play defensively? Couldn't find anyone open. Left him nowhere to go with the football. Had to absorb the sack. Gay's kick is good. And the Bucks take a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick... Look, I know defensive backs. They have a tendency to be a little bit lack. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Looking to throw. Hall caught by Wilson. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 20. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down.
distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They go play action. It's Rosen. Carrying this one out for Evans. No. <sighs> bullshit. Well, no, that's not bullshit. That was a good play. He was just in the right position. But that's definitely not on Rosen. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. Sony Michelle, his first carry. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. The numbers a week ago for Michelle. 15 carries and even 60 yards and a touchdown. I can't remember the last time we did a game and a coach didn't talk about establishing the run first, but they've lost two straight games, so they still want to do that, but they've got to have some contingencies, some other options. Expect them maybe to throw it a little bit to open up things and maybe run it a little bit more later in the game. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Downhill throw, and that's knocked away and incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. This from 54 yards away. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Josh Rosen and company getting set for their next possession. And he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive, if you can even call it a drive. One play and an interception, so he's got to forget that. I know that in today's football, we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the, the old school guys did. But there's still a place for it. I think that on this drive, after having thrown that interception, they're going to want to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense and give their defense a little bit of a break. On second down now, it's Jones. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. It's Thornton. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit, and it creases like they were able to exploit right there. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He lost two there, and it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. On third down, Rosen. And that is incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. The Pats at the line, ready to go. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
and I'm sure on their sideline they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Nikhil Harry was the intended target, and it's third down. New England on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Here's Hall. Operating from the gun. And he'll get that to Michelle. Complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now Hall throwing on fourth down. And that is going to be incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. Well, that was too far for a field goal try. You don't really gain a whole lot out of a punt, so I don't think you have much of a problem with that, do you? No, not at all. I think it's the right play, the, the exact right play, because even if you want to play defense and pin them deep, you know how hard it is for a punter to, to knock one dead inside the 10-yard line. That's not uh, uh, that's not necessarily easily done. So I think going for it there was the right call. Open man, Gronkowski complete. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Rosen will throw. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Second and 10, it's Rosen again. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. This drive starts out on the ground with Michelle. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit, thanking them for that much space to rumble. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three-nothing, our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you cross state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. Now a throw for the left sideline, and he's got it. Seven yards there and a first down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked into the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. 
trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw it to the tight end. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. To throw it is Hall. Throwing on third and long. Connection. This is Ryan Izzo complete. That one good for 24 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. To Michelle on the screen. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second and four. Gets this into the hands of Nikhil Harry. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, yo. Operating from the gun. Ball. Wilson's got it complete. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Second and five. Completes it to Lee. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Brought a little soccer into it. And that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. This one fielded at the five. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play caller's just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big shot down. No, no, no. Guaranteed head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. You went through that so whole tirade as I was throwing a deep pass and the time ran out on the score. clock. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores around the NFL here in a busy Week 14. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And it's the Lions who hold on to the lead in that one. Matthew Stafford has thrown a touchdown pass. Next, we'll take the trip north to the Still City to check on the Steelers at home in Pittsburgh. And they trail the visiting Denver Broncos in that one. Cortland Sutton, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And you can see they trail the visiting Cowboys. Two touchdown passes there for Dak Prescott. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been as tight as we expected, all tied through one half of play. 
with the call of the second half. Let's get it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we will second half ready to roll. Two field goals, a combined output in half number one. Could be first touchdown wins. This one fielded at the five. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. All right, Patriots. Now a rookie about to defeat you. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. On first down, Thornton. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Second and 11. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And he'll be corralled out across midfield. Oh, down shit. Gronk gets injured, cliche. The completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. He's crashing. He's checking the door. Back to throw. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 36 yards on the play. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game, and for a second, I thought they had it right there. Now looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. It's a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll set up a throw, and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Chris Godwin hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Bucs have taken the lead. You're my boy, Grom. Pass, I'm going to bring up a point from earlier in the year. Some of the fans were saying, when do we turn to the rookie? Well, he's looking pretty good right now. Yeah, I love the fact that the fans are bringing that up because I'm not the head coach, okay? <laughs> so he's got to deal with it. But I think it's a legitimate question. With the way their season is going, I think now is the time to turn the page and let him get some starts before this season is over. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Patriots offensive unit. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Hall to throw again, and that's incomplete. 
about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll come out throwing here on first down. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A very solid gain of 27. This quarterback now a perfect 5 of 5 since taking over. They haven't missed a beat. First and 10. Now a give right side. It's starting. Jeezy closed that distance fast. I thought I had a, at least a half a second to get to the outside. That would have been another touchdown. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. They'll look to throw here on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. And some room to run. And now a fumble. The ball's out, and it's picked up by the Patriots. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll run with Michelle. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. With the Bucks offense making their way back out on the field, let's take a look at the playoff picture, Charles, coming into the weekend in the NFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seed? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it to each other supporting each other, carrying each other along because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, shouldn't take the foot off the gap. No, not at all. Play it all the way through. And I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. From the 22, here's second and eight. On play action, they'll throw. That'll be caught by Jordan Leggett, his tight end. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. 
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they... Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. You better come to your boy. You better come to your boy. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. The blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Second and 15. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll make it third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. The Bucks on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 15. Now back to throw. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. Second and nine now. And he's going to have the hook up here with Harry. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup on 16. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Back to throw. Hall. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. Back to throw now on second and ten. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Looking to throw. Oh, they'll check this one down to Michelle. And he'll only get this to about the 35, well short of the line to gain. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Second and 10. That's into the hands of the tight end, Leggett. And running with power here. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 43 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays? Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. 
They'll look to throw now on first down. He finds his target. It's Evans. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A little over 20 yards there, and in two plays, they've now moved the ball over 60 yards. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll look to throw here. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Cameron Blake, his first touchdown on the year as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Hall now from the gun. He'll throw. And that will be incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. Here's Hall. Throwing on fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Let's go, They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This will be caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Chris Godwin with touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone could stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that's leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, we've got no shot to beat this team. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play 
and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see hurry, something hurry. executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now Hall, gonna throw again. And that is incomplete. Now, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. And this one is right down the middle. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not gonna matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, Dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 51 yards. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And they were booing. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this game. So Revenge is a dish best served cold. Time. But I occasionally Obviously, like it roasted. <laughs> but in any case, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm advanced and will always continue to be. And maybe doing I'm out. You practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So for Tampa Bay, the streak lives as they move to 13-0 now on the year. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Carolina Panthers.